Oh, hey there, big guy. Please don't call me that. But you're like twice my height. It makes me uncomfortable. Okay, below average guy, would you like to go to online? I am the exact same height as every other hunter. Uh, do you want to go to online? Why have you phrased it that exact same way twice? No reason. Ladies, gentlemen, and monsters of all ages, welcome one and all to the great grand world of Monster Hunter Online, a game that I personally never got to play given that it closed down its servers in 2019 and also that it was technically only available in China, where I do not live. Fun fact though, the word itself, China, has three of the four letters of the word Canada within it. Monster Hunter Online ran for a number of years and had a lot of cool things going on for it. I definitely don't know much about its history from the inside, but what I do know is that I love monsters. I love creature design. And this game, like all Monster Hunter games, has some really just incredible monsters. So today I'm going to be talking about the top five monsters from Monster Hunter Online that that I would love to see return in the main series games, whether this be in Sunbreak with wirebugs existing or in a future game further down the line. These would still probably be my solid five choices barring any significant mechanical changes in the next generation of Monster Hunter. So without further ado, let's begin with a slight honorable mention. The flagship of the game is Australian. Yes, they're not actually in my proper top five. I adore them significantly, but this is my personal preference list. And as you know, I'm a bit weird. So let's move on to number five. Quick, make like a beaver. Wait, what? Caesar bear. Yes, I put the big beaver above Australian, okay? I love beavers, they're amazing creatures, massive teeth, big old thick thumping tails, and I love bears. This monster is, of course, a beaver-themed bear monster, so yeah, he sort of hits a lot of personal notes for me. This is probably the place where I divert the most from most of you guys, as I imagine most of you would move him off and put Australian on the list proper, but I just can't do that to my good little beaver bear, especially when you consider his actual fight. The way that he just rips trees up from the ground with his teeth to use them as a full on weapon, swinging them from his mouth. Other than that, he has a lot of swipes and slashes and a number of just really cool moves where he uses his full body weight as a proper weapon against you as opposed to simply the strength behind the punch of an arm or something like that. He throws dirt at you sometimes because he can, but for the most part, that's about it. He's an earlier tier monster, so there isn't a crazy amount going on, but I adore his concept so much and would absolutely love to fight one of these myself one day. Number four. We're crab people now. Crab. We're crab people now? Yes. Bailaday. Are you surprised that the monster that is both a spider and a crab is on my list given my thoughts on both crabs and spider monsters? I mean, come on, this is like a perfect marriage of two unusually shaped, creepy, cool beings. The front half of the crab, the back half similar to a spider, though I won't just straight up call it a spider's abdomen, because this creature is ecologically speaking a carapacean, not a temnoceran like Nursilla or Rachnikadaki. So it may just be a fancy shell that it found at some point. It does, however, still produce silk like a spider and uses it as a weapon quite effectively. Spray it out as a cone, shooting it out into the air so it falls down almost like mortar shots, even using it to pull a swinging drive-by attack across the zone. <laughs> This monster also doesn't have the perfect fight for me, by which I mean I think there is quite a bit of untapped moveset possibilities with this creature, a lot of ways to mix what it has in ways that hasn't been done yet, as opposed to Caesar Bear, who I think actually makes pretty full use of everything that he's got. In my mind, that's actually a big boost to Bailaday in this, because that means if they were brought back into the main series, their remake might be able to do even more really cool crab spider moves. Gotta be careful not to call it a spider crab though, because that is an actual different thing. Number three. Back here live at the Waterfront Village with my friend, the zombie, Jonathan. You're looking good. Jonathan just got an awesome face paint job. What do you think? I like turtles. All right, you're great zombie. Tartaronis. And here we come to, spoiler, the only elder dragon on this list. What can I say? I know what I like. Tartaronis is a land-based turtle, which already makes him quite interesting because normally that's the tortoise's domain. But what is even more interesting than that is his ability to control the sand around him in such significant ways as to create giant dust devils. And then as the perfect giant surfer did that he is, he hangs 10, flying up into the air and riding the wind currents. He's a fly 
flying fucking massive turtle. An absolutely massive towering flying turtle. Fuck yeah. He fires sand at you from his back as well, but mostly his main draw to me is the fact that he's a gigantic flying turtle, to be honest. Fights can always be remade. They can always be added to. It's the concepts that I care about. And while personally, I would prefer to fight this specific one in Sunbreak as opposed to any other future game, just because I think that the wire bug would be really awesome here, I would still be more than happy to see this guy return in a world without wire bugs too. They're just such a cool monster to me. Number two. This is a disaster, an unmitigated disaster. Koyaku. There is something just so absolutely satisfying about this creature to me. It may just be that I like shapes and patterns, and when he puts his arms together with his head, and it makes that fancy multi-sided spear shape, and then propels steam out of his back to charge at you with said spear, it's absolutely badass. If I had one thing to mention about it, a little odd to me that it can track you so well in its charges, given that it's covering its eyes with its arms. But who cares? This thing is too cool to think about logic right now. He is a water monster, which is a severely underrepresented element in the main series, and he is basically just using the rocket dash from Ryze's Gunlance over and over and over as a monster. Super fast, super strong, and quite a bit relentless. Apart from the animation of putting his arms together with his head to make a big spike, I do just love his general shape as well. Like, not just those limbs individually either. The fin-like protrusions on and the over and the underside of his tail are just great. The actual, like, coloring of his scales is almost metallic. And I think most of all, it's that his head reminds me of a shark. To me, this guy is the shark-based brute wyvern, with all the extra mechanics of shooting steam from exhaust vents and the spear tip charging. It's just absolutely dripping with pure coolness from start to finish. Number one. I've got the beetle! Light Tenna. Okay, now tell me this isn't one of the coolest monsters that you have ever seen without lying. I bet that you can't. This creature, if put into the main series, might very well become one of my favorites. There's just something so believable, yet fantastical, about this gigantic electric beetle. The way that its animations release its attacks, in fact, the way that it moves in general has some slight Camellios vibes to me, with the unique way that it flutters and jitters around with its movement, it feels like a beetle. It feels so alive, and this is a really cool application of the thunder element as well for this creature. He can use it like lots of creatures do, little balls of thunder, big AoEs around himself, but they can also shoot it out like a single shot from a laser gun that makes a very satisfying sound effect. The sheer number of different ways that this creature uses electricity as a weapon is fantastic. And I guess all, all of this is to say, insect monsters are absolutely sick. Beetles are great, and this is a beetle whose design is gorgeous, whose in-game personality feels like a very accurate representation of the creature that has been created before us, and whose moveset is so diverse in the applications of the one element it controls, it just... It is so, so good. If you don't like this monster, then you should probably go see a doctor or something. However, if you spend too much time around this monster, you may also need to see a doctor. So, you know, all good things in moderation. Contrary to that, if this monster is added to the main series, I straight up expect it to become one of my most hunted monsters of all time. It's just that cool. All right, everyone, I've been Cotton Dinosaur, and this has been my personal list of the top five Monster Hunter Online monsters to be added to the main series games. I adore every one of the ones that I've talked about today, and there are still more Monster Hunter Online monsters that I love that didn't quite make this list. Who knows, maybe one day we'll get another Monster Hunter MMO that brings back a bunch of the now missing monsters that came from Monster Hunter Online and Frontier. That would be really cool, I would love that. What do you all think of the five choices that I brought in front of you today? Do you agree? Or is there another one from this roster that you would prefer? Like if you liked the video, subscribe and hit the notification bell for more. And most importantly, ladies and gentlemen, until next time, stay sweet. Josh, Cotton, and Hollow with the videos Dropping the humor like a hammer on your tippy toes Bringing entertainment on a daily arrangement To take our insanity and turn it into entertainment Yes, I said entertainment twice To reiterate that it is nice To look into your faces on a mostly daily basis When you let us in your homes to make the whole world our stage Is, uh, goodbye